Hello, we're here at the 13th edition of the Antigua Forum. Today we're having a conversation with Faisal Anmuter. He's the founder and president of Ideas Beyond Borders. Faisal, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Faisal, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Um, I was born in Babylon, which is, I guess, the biblical, mentioned in the Bible a couple of times. But I grew up in the capital city in Baghdad. Uh, first era of my life was under the regime of Saddam Hussein, which was a combination of Arab nationalism mixed up with socialism. Then the, the famous or the infamous Iraq war happened where the United States invaded Iraq and then overthrew that regime. Um, we moved, what I always say, like from 1984 with kind of stronghold prison into chaos. Uh, so then the civil war happened in, in Iraq. Uh, and then my crazy self decided to speak out against that. My parents are academics, so I grew up in a kind of a, a liberal kind of environment. Um, and then started speaking out, long story short, ended up on a death list. Had to leave Iraq uh, in 2009, moved to Lebanon, and then moved to Southeast Asia. And then I got accepted to come to the U.S. in 2013. What in your journey inspired you to to create Ideas Beyond Borders? Um, I mean, it's, a, it's a combination of factors. When I landed in America, kind of one of the first kind of feelings I had being in a kind of a, a land of opportunity is what, what can I do um, to kind of help many of the people that I grew up with to achieve a freer society? It's kind of see like what other organizations are doing. And then I get into um, a job that actually helps the human rights defenders across the world, which was funded by Google. And then that's how kind of my professional journey started. And then I get to know more about the world and what are ways in which somebody can intervene to do something good. And I saw that like most of classical liberalism materials and knowledge is not available in the languages in the Middle East. So there is a huge lack of accessibility. So it's like, how can somebody advocate against socialism, but there is no alternative can people look up to or actually see and identify? So my first kind of project was building a translation team, which now grew to 120 people of, uh, that does five languages. But when we began, began, we began with Arabic. And you know, I would say is that Ideas Beyond Borders came from this kind of spirit of getting to do something uh, good from a place of privilege to some extent. What in Ideas Beyond Borders are you most passionate about? Uh, the one that I think most interests me nowadays is that entrepreneurship and innovation. I I'm, I'm became more and more interested in the kind of the application of the classical liberal values other than like just making them accessible, but rather have, having people to see what they actually mean, private enterprise, innovation, collaboration, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's, I would say, is the most interesting thing to me. And we'd love to hear a little bit of the entrepreneurs that you've supported and obviously have a little bit of inside information since we were sharing these past few days. But we'd love to hear about that and also about your reach in terms of media. So many of the people already are social influencers. So when I started Ideas Beyond Borders, I became a hub and I acquired most of the social media pages of these influencers. So we started with like, I think 3.8 million subscribers or like the first couple of months. And now I think we're closer to 6 million uh, subscribers. And uh, so that's how kind of our, we built up like a media to be like, I Many people start getting inspired to be like, I want to start a business. I want to do something. I mean, I'm, I'm receiving all this knowledge. I'm learning about free enterprise. I'm, how, what, how can I apply it? There's something really inspiring when you like see someone with like very limited resources that has already have all of that ambition and, and energy. And then if you just give them a small little push, sometimes even a couple hundred dollars, and you see them like thriving and hiring more people and um, and, and so that, that's what I would say, like the, the category of, of people that we like to support, they, like the money is like a push for them to succeed. It's not like they, without the money, they will, they will fail. But I think is, that's what I think we come in as a, as a, as a place to support. These are a lot of projects. Uh, where are they now? As, as of now, we have supported roughly 200 plus businesses. Uh, I think the number is like 220. So part of the reason why we came to Antigua Farm is actually to scale this program and also even change this, this is is model, uh, because some of these businesses, um, the one some of them I, when I highlighted, have really became amazingly successful. Tell me a little bit more about that. With the Antigua Forum, um, with kind of a, a problem solving mindset and, and with people who have have the experience and have the the expertise and the fact that there is kind of an element of 
formality and expertise that is added, I think is, is really helpful. And when people are coming with these ideas, they get kind of categorized as different methodologies. And then from that, you can like, okay, this has this benefits, this benefits. And then we really get into like a, a very concrete goals. And I think, I think I'm, I'm excited to come back to the office and make some of them happen. In broad terms, what were you trying to achieve and what do you walk away with? So what we're trying to achieve is is really building uh, a venture capital firm in the Middle East, one of the very few that focuses on small businesses uh, that have a high potential of growth. And I think that creating kind of a broad-based entrepreneurship model that is scalable, that's able to hire as many people as possible, able to get people to know the work ethics and do and only be part of the kind of the, the market ecosystem. So I think it's like the model that we are moving into is the one that can help everybody involved in the process. And, and, and that's something I'm very excited about. What would you say for someone, a project owner, who's considering applying to the NTU for him? Come with an open mind. You're going to be surrounded with a lot of people who have built things before, who are here to help you. So I think the most important thing is like, don't get stuck into like what you think was right, but rather come to Antigua not to lecture, but rather to listen to see what, what other ideas are there that you may not have considered and, and come with an open mind. Awesome. Thank you, Faithal. You're very welcome, my friends.